Hey guys, it's Aiden. I'll cut straight to the chase. In this video, I'll be going over some challenging ACT math questions and some strategies that you can use to efficiently solve these problems and save time. If you guys haven't already, I highly recommend you watch my full ACT guide where I provide countless of free resources, including practice tests and real tests, as well as sites that help me during my preparation. The math section is probably the most straightforward section in the ACT. You get 60 minutes for 60 questions. However, that doesn't mean you get one minute for every question. The questions get harder as you go, so question 50 will be much harder than question 10, so budget your time accordingly. I'll be going over some tricky problems now, so I recommend pausing the video first and trying to solve the problem before watching my explanation so you can learn from your mistakes. Alright, so let's get into the problems. First, we have this problem right here. Let n be any even number greater than or equal to 4. Which of the three expressions below must be equal to an even number? So a great way to tackle these sorts of problems is by just plugging a number in for the variable and solving. Instead of just sitting there scratching your head and thinking about it, just plug in a number for n, right? n can be any number, right? Any even number greater or equal to 4. So it doesn't really matter what number we choose. So let's say we choose 6, right? So 6 over 2 is 3, so that's not even. So n over 2 does not work. 2 times 6 is 12, and that's even, so that works, right? So 2n works, and the square root of 6 is definitely not even. So the answer you can easily tell is b. The first strategy is to just plug numbers in when you see a variable to save as much time as possible. Let's look at this next problem as well. This one also has a variable. Um, it has two functions, right? f of x and g of x, and it's asking us to find uh, g f of negative 1, right? So the best way we can do that is by first finding f of negative 1 first and plugging it into the function g, right? So if we plug negative 1 into function f, that would be 1 plus 5 plus 6, which is 12. Now we plug 12 into the function g to get 144 minus 84 minus 10, which is 50 or k. All right, let's take a look at this problem. The original price of an item was decreased by 20%. The first reduced price was decreased by 20% and then that second reduced price was decreased by 50%. The price that resulted from these three decreases was what percent less than the original price? So simple, right? 20 plus 20 plus 50 is 90, right? So the answer is J, but that's wrong. A trick that the ACT likes to use is a misleading answer choice. They're aware of common mistakes that you may make, right? And they deliberately include them in the answer choices so you don't realize that you're wrong. You can prevent yourself from making these sorts of mistakes and falling into the ACT's traps by logically walking through these problems, right? And a really nice trick for this is, we talked about this, it's just plugging in numbers for the variable, right? And the variable would be what the original price is, right? But we can just plug in 100 to make that easier, right? And once we have the original price to 100, it'll be much easier for us to see how the prices change as, you know, we apply the discounts, right? So if you decrease the original price by 20%, you would get $80, right? And if you decreased $80 by 20%, again, you would get $64. And if you reduce $64 by 50%, you would get $32. So in total, it was a 68% decrease or answer H, right? Of course, you could use your calculator to do these calculations much quicker. Moving on to the next question. This is another great example of a plug and chug problem by just replacing the variables with a number, right? Say we replace C with 1, right? And since B is 6 times as big as C, B would be 6. And since A is 3 times as big as B, A would be 18. Now that we have those values, we can just plug it into the expression, right? And we get 36 plus 18 divided by 24 plus 3, which is 54 divided by 27, or just 2, right? Which is answer D, right? We just took this really hard problem and just made it super easy by just plugging in values for variables. All right, let's cover a bit of trig now, right? So let's look at this next problem. A vertical radio tower stands on ground level. From a point 200 feet along ground level from the base of the tower, the angle of elevation to the top of the tower is 50 degrees. Which of the following values is closest to the height in feet of the radio tower? So another big tip I have is to sketch out diagrams of problems, right? So if we sketch out this triangle, you can see that the adjacent side is 200 feet, and we're trying to find the opposite side, which is the height. Um, we also are told that the angle is 50 degrees. So then we can use Sokotoa, right, to see that tangent 50 is equal to the opposite side over 200 feet. And now we can solve for the opposite side by multiplying tangent 50 by 200, 
and if you put that in your calculator that would be 240 or h and it also tells you in the problem that tangent 50 is 1.2 so you can do 1.2 times 200 and that would be 240. all right let's take a look at another tricky trick problem at face value this question looks pretty difficult right let's take the first step by drawing the triangle and the diagram out right and labeling theta so we know that sine theta is 2 over 3 and using Sokotoa we know that that means the opposite side is 2 and the hypotenuse is 3. So we also know that this is a right triangle. So using the Pythagorean theorem, we can find the length of the adjacent side, which is just square root 5, right? Now we can easily find cosine theta, and that would just be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, right? So square root 5 over 3, or answer choice K. This next type of question is also pretty tricky. The problem tells us that the ratio of the line AB to BC is 1 to 2, meaning that the line BC is twice as big as AB. This also means that the point B sits one third of the way across the line AC from point A, right? So if we draw out the diagram, it would look something like this. And we can find the x-coordinate of B by simply taking the difference of the x-coordinates of A and C, which is 8 and negative 4. So the difference is 12. Now 12 divided by 3 is 4, and now we just have to move 4 units to the left of point A, right? So 8 minus 4 is equal to 4. So the x coordinate of point B is 4, leaving only one answer choice, K. Moving on to the final question that I want to talk about today. For what positive value of K will the expression 9x squared plus KX plus 25 factor into form AX plus B squared for some real number A or some real number B? The trick to this question is knowing ax plus b. Since ax plus b squared has to foil into 9x squared plus something x plus 25, we know for sure that both a and b have to be 3 and 5 respectively. So we can plug that in for ax plus b to get 3x plus 5 squared. And now you foil like normal, right? And you get 9x squared plus 30k plus 25. So k is just equal to 30 or f. We've just covered some of the more challenging problems in the ACT math section. So if you're able to understand and keep up, the rest of the problem should be a breeze for you. My overall advice for the math section would be to know what you're solving for and to avoid silly mistakes. You can avoid these mistakes by making sure you know 100% of all the material that will be on the test. And I found this super awesome cheat sheet that has literally every tricky thing that you have to have down to ace the math section. Also, make sure to utilize the best calculator that you can. It saves so much time solving equations and being able to graph things. So really learn how to use your TI-84 comfortably and to get the maximum advantage during the test. I've linked a really nice video mastering the TI-84 for the ACT in the description as well anyways that about wraps it up for this video if this video helped you and you guys learned something new i'd really appreciate it if you guys subscribed i'll be making similar guides for the science and reading section as well so you guys do not want to miss that if you guys have any questions i'd be more than happy to answer them so feel free to leave a comment or dm me on ig peace